Plum Village is a community of practice, and there are many communities of practice like that, uh, a little bit everywhere. And uh, the way we set up the community must depend somehow on the local conditions. In Australia, there is a community called the Lotus Bud Village. In Canada, they, there is a community called uh, Village de Zerable. Uh, um, what is the name in English? Uh, Maple. Maple Village. Maple Village. Uh, uh, and uh, there are other uh, communities like that. Uh, the main practice is to live uh, mindfully, to organize uh, the community of practice uh, as a family. This is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, to practice, first of all, is to live together in harmony, peace, and joy. And our transformation, our own transformation, can only take place uh, in a in a community where we find ourselves at ease. Um, in our community, we call each other brother, sister, and that is uh, in our tradition. Uh, the teacher is like a father. Uh, uh, the other person is your Dharma brother or your Dharma sister, and you have to behave exactly like in a family. And there are those who come from uh, broken families. They have not had a chance to be in real family. Uh, they have to adapt, adopt the community as their family, their first, because they have never had, had one. A family. And for these people, we have to be very patient. We have to be very caring and loving so that they may get rooted in their first family. Mm -hmm. And only after that could mm -hmm. transformation take place. Uh -huh. yeah. And that is why I recommend to my friends who are practicing a little bit everywhere in Europe and in America, that the practice center should be organized as a family. Uh, you don't practice for yourself alone. You have to practice for your brother, your sister. And interpersonal relation is our practice. We have to pay attention to that. Because the sorrow, the pain of the other person uh, is the object of our practice. When you are able to help and to transform that sorrow, that pain in your Dharma brother or sister, the joy Comes goes back, back to you. And it's very rewarding. Mm -hmm. mm. uh, since uh, I have been in Plum Village more than 12 years, I have noticed that everyone has got a transformation. Everyone. Uh, there are those of us who get transformed very quickly in just a few weeks, a few months. Mm. There, are, there are those of us who need uh, two years, three years, or four years to get a transformation. But practically, everyone got a transformation. If, uh, if you practice uh, um, in the context of a Sangha, uh, if uh, you admit, if you accept uh, uh, other members of your brother and sisters, sooner or later, the transformation will, will take place. Right. The power of the Sangha. Yes. It's the power of the Sangha. It's interesting, you call uh, the teacher the father, because I've usually thought of it as the, what, Kalyan Mita, the spiritual friend, as the teacher, and yet you're talking about it as the father. In China, Sifu is uh, monk father. Monk father. Monk. Daddy monk. I see. I Daddy see. monk. And a small one call me grandpa monk uh, because their parents <laughs> are my students. Right, grandpa monk. <laughs> yeah, grandpa monk. And um, huh. sister monk, uh, has, uh, uh, brother monk, that's the, what we call. 
I think that has that uh, these expressions have been used in China, Vietnam, two thousand years. Uh -huh. It's not something new. Uh, then let me talk to you as Grandpa Monk, and uh, in India, um, there are the ashramas or stages of life, and uh, as one gets to the fourth stage of life one's direction alters somewhat. One takes a somewhat different role in the social structures and in the curriculum and the inner work. What is your personal experience about the effects of age in terms of your agenda, in terms of your... I think uh, we, should, uh, we should encourage the young people to begin the practice right away, as soon as possible because uh, when the person is still young it's very easy to plant the seeds the positive seeds in them uh, as uh, a person grow old and got too much uh, afflictions within themselves it, it will become more difficult to help mm. and uh, my my experience is that uh, many young person 16, 18, 20, 25, uh, if they become monks or nuns at that age, it's very easy to train them and to make them into happy monks and happy nuns. But if they begin at the age of uh, 50 or more like that, it will be much more difficult. Really? Yeah. Why do you think that? Mm -hmm. Because uh, they've finished, the 50-year-olds have finished a lot of their worldly stuff. They should be ideally suited. I don't understand. Uh, uh, I, that that come from experience. Yeah. Uh, that is what I notice. I experience uh, yeah. during the teaching, because uh, I have helped uh, train many generations of monks and nuns, and I know sure. about it. Yeah. Uh, when uh, you have got a lot of pain, of sorrow, of affliction within yourself. Uh, it will be much more difficult to plant the seeds of joy, of peace, of loving kindness into you. You have to spend a lot of time trying to uh, transform and lessen the pain and the sorrow in that person before you can do anything. So I, uh, I would uh, like to uh, to invite uh, my friends to look uh, more deeply on this matter. Um, there are children who come to Plum Village when they are nine or ten, uh, and they practice uh, one month or two months a year. And after ten years, they are quite different from other children. Mm -hmm. They grow up. They, they are very capable of being joyful uh, in the community. But when they are out there in society, they are also very natural. And uh, you can see the difference between a young man, a young woman that has been trained in the practice, sure. and uh, another person. They are more capable of being happy, mm -hmm. of being calm, serene. They are more able to reconcile with other people. That is why it is my belief, my conviction, that uh, children should be initiated to the practice as soon as they could. And the practice may be very joyful, very pleasant. Mm. If uh, we think of the practice as uh, something very hard, and then uh, I don't think that it's fit to the young people. In uh, Europe and in America, I have offered uh, retreats of mindfulness to children. And um, they, they do very well. Uh, like uh, one day, uh, on the last day of the children retreat in uh, Santa Barbara, uh, in, uh, in, in, um, in Southern California, uh, children say, why do we have to go? Because they love so much the practice in Plum Village, the practice of mindfulness in our daily life, surrounded by uh, friends who want to learn mindful living, supported by their parents, 
and they practice uh, something like a pebble meditation. You see, each child, each, uh, each uh, um, child is uh, provided with five pebbles, and uh, they they put it in a small bag, and they come to the meditation hall, and they sit beautifully like a lotus flower, and they take out the five pebbles. And they practice breathing in, I am fresh like a flower. Uh, breathing in, I see myself as a flower. Breathing out, I feel fresh. Breathing in, I feel myself, I see myself as a uh, uh, space. Breathing out, I feel free. Breathing in, I f see myself as mountain. Breathing out, I feel firm. Breathing in, I see myself as still water. Breathing out, I reflect things as they are. And then they pick up one pebble and they move to the right. And then go back and then they practice the same thing before they move another pebble to the right. And after having done that, they hear the bell and they stand up and they uh, practice walking uh, slow like walking. Uh, flower, fresh. Mountain, solid. solid. Space, free. And they enjoy it. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful device. And it's got so much samadhi and so much concentration. And it's so natural for them. And uh, they, they enjoy it. Uh, yeah. Children in France, I offer them uh, walking meditation with uh, the two words. When they breathe in, they say, oui, oui. And when they breathe out, they say, merci, merci. merci. <laughs> That's lovely. <laughs> yeah, to, to, to learn to say yeah. yes to yes. the earth, to yeah. the sky, to the trees, and to express thanks to life. Mm. What about old monks and nuns? Do their agenda change? You've been, you've got a family now. You've got old monks, old nuns. Do their interest, do their role, do their ways that they work change? Does their relationship to death change them? What what happens with age for a monk and a nun? It depends on the environ environment. Um, uh, if uh, we bring in the community, young monks and nuns who yeah. live with joy yeah. and peace, that will have a good impact on the older monks and nuns. In fact, in Plum Village, we don't have uh, monks and nuns who are too old. <laughs> uh, uh, that is why um, mm, um, it's not uh, difficult for us. But I think uh, the problem uh, lies in the fact that uh, if you are trained in a different way, uh, if you think that uh, uh, you practice for the sake of the future, and then it will be difficult, especially in the beginning, because the training in Plum Village is that uh, every day should be a beautiful day. Mm -hmm. You should get uh, happy right today. You don't need to wait until tomorrow in order to get happy. And if someone had been trained in another tradition, another way, that's why you have to work very hard, to train very hard, uh, so we can hope that tomorrow there will be peace and joy and liberation. Mm -hmm. Only to remove that kind of idea takes a lot of uh, energy already. But uh, fortunately in Plum Village, um, all of us agree that uh, efforts should be made so that the present moment is the most important moment in our life. Which is the optimum way to be ready for whatever next moment is. Yes. Um, the next moment is made of this moment. So, this moment so the best way to take care of the next, the next moment, moment is, is to, to take care of, of this moment. moment. Yes. So that actually the, the life of a monk as they get older 
is the same practice. It's the same exact practice that just goes on and on through all of life. Yes, sometimes a young monk can get deeper uh, than an old monk. It depends. Uh, Even if the old monk has been practicing since they were young? Long, yes. Hmm? Uh, enlightenment is not a matter of time. Uh-huh. It's not the number of years that determine your insight. Why is, it, why is it that a young monk can get deeper than an old monk? Uh, if you get the right practice, and if you practice uh, deeply, uh, you can do better than the people who have uh, practiced uh, uh, for a long time. Interesting. Um, it is not because you practice a long time that your insight is better, deeper. No, not at all. Um, um, the Buddha himself said so. Uh, remember uh, when uh, King uh, Prasenajit asked him, uh, Buddha, there are many venerated teachers in our, in, in our country. They are very old. They have practiced uh, much more than you. And uh, they don't claim to be complete, uh, un- completely enlightened. But you, your students, uh, call you the, the, the highest uh, mm. uh, enlightened person. And the, Buddhist, the Buddha said that uh, enlightenment is not a matter of time. Uh, we should not uh, underestimate uh, something small, like uh, a spark of fire, a, uh, a little Mustard po- seed. Uh, mo- um, poison, poisonous uh, snake, uh-huh. or a baby prince, or a young monk. Uh, the spark of fire is very small, but if you are not careful, it can burn down the whole city a uh, small snake. It can kill you in just a few minutes. A baby monk, uh, a baby uh, baby prince, he'll become a king. You cannot mis- uh, underestimate him. And a young monk, if he practice correctly, he can get enlightenment mm-hmm. in a very short time. So mm-hmm. that was the question uh, posed by the king, uh, Prasenajit, to the Buddha. And, mm-hmm. and the Buddha gave the answer like that. Ah, ah. Mm. So there really isn't any unique um, expectation or any unique um, nature of shift in practice with age. I wouldn't think so. Yeah. Um, there are young monks and nuns who have practiced only two, three, or four years. And they have proved to be able to do better than those who have practiced 20 or 30 years. Uh, If uh, they start with an enlightenment, uh, that uh, the awareness, the true happiness, uh, should uh, be based on peace inside, solidity and freedom. And then they can make progress very quickly because they know that happiness could not be obtained by running after wealth, fame, sex, and so on like that. So are determined to close the door uh, to these avenues. And they have de- when they have decided to close the door, they get very concentrated and they make very quick uh, progresses on the direction of, uh, 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 of uh, peace and stability and uh, freedom within their heart. Is the technology of, this is a shift a little bit, but is that we are, you and I are meeting with cameras rolling and this will turn into tapes, and these tapes will end up being edited, and then they will end up on television sets, and many people will look at this somewhere in the world. Tell me about the role of the media in terms of the human condition. Telecommunication 
is uh, a wonderful thing. Uh, news, informations get to the other place in the world in no time at all. But uh, at this very time, communication between men and men has become very difficult. Father cannot talk to son. Husband cannot talk to wife. And although they are facing each other, communication is impossible. Uh, when you watch something on television, when you go watch a video, um, you may not uh, communicate. You may not receive the message if your heart is full of uh, suffering, anger, and um, prejudices. Uh, the listener or the viewer uh, should get some degree of uh, freedom within his or her heart, some peace in order to, to, to receive the message. Hmm. Um, therefore, I would think that uh, together with the means of communication uh, provided by technology, we have to do something to help people to rediscover their capacity of listening and of uh, speaking. Uh, if in a, in a family, uh, no one can talk to, to, to anyone. No one can listen to anyone. That would be hell. And the same thing is true in a society and in a world community. If we cannot listen to each other, that is because there is so much pain and anger in us. We have lost our capacity of uh, listening. The Bodhisattva Avalokiteshvara is someone who has the capacity of listening. And when you have the capacity of listening to someone, you relieve a lot of suffering in that person. And uh, when we and no longer able to communicate to the other person. That is also because there is so much pain and uh, despair and irritation uh -huh. in us. Therefore, we have to train ourselves in such a way that we could transform the pain and the despair in us so that we'll be able to speak with loving speech again. And I think... Uh, um, I think um, although we have uh, wonderful means to communicate, uh, the techniques of uh, communication is very sophisticated. Still, I feel the need of uh, the practice so that uh, father can talk to son and daughter again, wife can talk to husband again, and what uh, technology can help in this. Mm -hmm. And the technology could help people learn to listen more deeply. The technology itself could do that. How? Well, I could imagine this this experience being transmitted through a television set and you speaking directly into the mind and the heart of the person who's sitting in front of the television set and you're inviting them to listen more clearly and the nature of your listening now you're not listening to them they don't feel listened to at that moment but as they listen to you, they come into a place of listening. And then that changes them. Then they, in turn, listen to others. And then others feel safe and start to listen to them. I could imagine the technology serving some function in that way. When I speak, 
I try to convey my feelings, my uh, insight, and I guess that there are people who have a heart that is not so burdened with sorrow, with anger, uh, uh, a heart that is still free uh, to, to listen and to receive the message. Uh, for those who have the capacity to listen like that, there's no doubt that our uh, conversation will help and technology uh, can help. Mm. But uh, there are many others yeah. who have no patience, uh, no courage, no time, uh, no uh, tranquility in order to listen to us. Uh, I don't want to blame them. Uh, uh, they just, uh, uh, it happens that they, are, they have not been helped. By They've never them. been listened to. Yes. They've never been listened to. Yes. So the, what I try to, to say before is that, uh, is there anything uh, we can do uh, to help these people. The presence of a loving person, the presence of someone who is able to listen, yeah. to understand, yeah. that is what uh, we need the most in, uh, in our life, in our world. I agree. It's been a joy.